welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi there. Hello. Good night. Um, based on where you're listening um, to this live podcast. Um, we're back with another episode. Uh, for you that are familiar, um, this is the Coach Kyle Show. Um, we air every Monday at 8 p.m. Um, if you're new, we're happy. Uh, if you're here, if you're being constant with us, we're grateful. If you're new, um, we're happy that you took this time out of your day to participate in this live podcast, The Coach Kayo Show. But it's very important for us to start on the, on the right foot and remind you, uh, in spite of what you might be going through right now, um, whatever experiences you might have had, be sure to know that greater is he that is in us um, than he that is in the world. You might not be <laughs> all the way religious or you might not be um, like some would, would term holy and righteous and in and, and all in all splendor, but God is still real. And he's, and he, you know, he's still on the throne and he is the one that uh, dictates our life. If you can, I would greatly appreciate um, you telling me that you are hearing clearly and you can see clearly and there's everything on this side seems to be good but I'm not sure what is happening on your side. So that will be greatly appreciated. Nevertheless, remember this show, um, we talk all things soccer, uh, but our ultimate objective here is to inspire, in, is to impact the lives of our young people, as we oftentimes say every week on this show. And we believe in indoctrination. I believe in repetition. Um, because it encodes something that allow you to live with this unconscious competence that we truly need in, in order uh, to live a healthy and fulfilled life. So our role on this live podcast is to impact, to inspire our young people to live out their purpose, um, People are suffering. Young people are suffering with their identity and understanding who they are and their self-worth. And we have taken on this responsibility um, to make sure that we are doing our part, small, big, in between, wherever wherever you, you put us, uh, we are making we are trying our best and making sure that we're doing our uh, our part in 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 enabling our young people to live a more intentional life now along the way someone might get the message um and it does something for them in a meaningful way we are grateful we are grateful um let God allow us to speak truth or light into, into your life. In these very uncertain times, it's needed. Um, the world is full of hate. <clears throat> the world have taught us not to trust, taught us not to believe. And, and there's factors and there's, um, there's experiences that, uh, will drive that behavior and drive that understanding. Nevertheless, the world is driving it, and and that is not 
the desire of the one who gave us life. So if we can help our young people and remind them to be intentional, to understand who you are, what is it you need to be doing and how you will do it, I think it brings meaning to life. As oftentimes we say and we promise at the end of this show, we know. Hi, Sonia. Hopefully you can hear me well and you're seeing me clearly. Please let me know. Um, you will surely be equipped uh, to make better decisions. We we are 100% sure that the end, at the ending of this show, if you're able to, to make it all the way but we know you can always you can always go back and look at the podcast we appreciate all the shares we we can't say enough of our appreciation to those who would have made the effort to share um, but please continue to share uh, because it might not be for you but like i said our young people are struggling in the in, in in these very eventful times, um, but also encourage others to to hop on, um, to to have the live experience, to participate, to ask the questions, uh, to share their experiences that will empower someone else. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've seen. A lot of a lot of you subscribing, and we appreciate that also. It just gives us more mileage and and, and helps help us to um, leave a trail for those who come in behind. So please do subscribe, Coyote McKinnon and Co. And it's not it's it's not a task. You just go to YouTube and you press subscribe. It's free. Um, it won't take a whole lot for you to do that so please do that so that you can be a part of this of this community this uncommon community we are not scripted here um, but this is an authentic podcast we speak from our experiences we speak from a perspective that we have encountered this is all things soccer Everything else, okay. You you can have your own, um, you can have your own idea about everything else in life. But this is the Coach Kayo show that speaks all things soccer. So in this community, in this environment, we are as authentic as it comes. All right. So tonight we will discuss. We'll discuss checks and balances. And I know we like this is this is the culture. This is this is the way of life. Um, this is a community that we most of us are familiar with. Checks and balances. Um, we are faced with great challenges within the soccer community. Um because there's a lack of accountability across the board. And our young people, um, believe it or not, uh, they are the ones, they are the ones suffering. They are the one, the ones that are left in the in in the leave out in the coal, as they say, because um, those that are responsible for creating uh, an environment or a place where they can grow, creating a safe space for them to grow, have rejected the responsibility in terms of their accountability. So we will definitely dive in um, to this topic. But if I want to give uh, some of our new people, new listeners, if they haven't heard about the KMXVI brand, um, this is a good opportunity to become familiar with it because it's the past, the present, which would definitely be the future of sports. Take a look.
Coyote, McKinnon and Company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and Company. We care. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Coach Coyote Show. Coyote here. Um, we're talking about checks and balances. Please do share, share, share as much as you can um, so that we reach as much young people as we can. The Coach Coyote Show is here. Um, here to discuss with me, though, this 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 very important topic, the wingman, as we call him, the great Wall Ahmed. Where are you, Wall? Sure, sure, you're in. Good night, night sir. Hello, sir. Based, based on what people expect, because you might, we might say good night, and you might just come off the show right away. <laughs> so, happy to have you again um, to you. discuss the checks and balances within our soccer community. But just want to remind the people that we have a cash app just on the screen. Please do support our movement. We're trying to bring soccer to everyone. Give every single child an opportunity um, if they have or don't. Um, so with your help, we can continue to keep this thing going and continue to be a part of the transformation and the advancement of young people um, in this time and in this life, yes, yeah, so, well, uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's been a it's been a, actually a very good week, very good week. Um, a lot of situations, a lot of good football we saw this weekend. So, again, energy inspired to to continue to move on this process. It was it was very good. Like I said, enjoyed it. Like I said, every day we step up, every day we wake up. Sorry, it's another day for us to to get better at our craft. So again, it's another day to show the world what we're about and to help the young ones, as we say, every day. So our uh, wall is the guy who will who oftentimes get all the questions on his side of the thing. And we're able to um we're able to 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 work through it <laughs> to bring the best answers that we can. But please do participate. Let us know that you are here. It's nice to know that you're not just talking to a wall, but you're actually talking to a live human being. You're not talking to aliens. Uh, it's nice to know that. It makes the conversation even better. Um, it it, it provokes uh, things that need to be provoked so we can find solutions and improve our lives. Each and every one of us, <clears throat> we, we share our part. We do the best that we can with what we have. Don't be mad with us. We're only talking from a place that from a place that we are familiar with. Like what you do. <laughs> like what you do. Um, people like I, I made a statement. I don't know if you remember, but I said <clears throat> people always say you have a choice until you make yours. Everybody says, right? You have a right to your choice. But when you make yours, then if it don't fit them, then you are, you're the worst person on the face of the earth. But everybody have, they have their choice and, and that must be respected regardless if you like it or not. It, it leaves you with less pain and less headache and less frustration and less stress when you come to the realization that every single person on the face of the earth have a choice. And even God was gracious to give us a choice when he very well know that we probably won't even choose him. So that's the power of choice. And we should allow people to have their choice, have their choices or their choice and keep it moving. There's too many angry people in the world because you just didn't like somebody's choice. Be like me. Keep it moving. 
find a way to just keep it moving. Let let somebody let them make their choice, and and it might bother you, but guess what? Get back in the game. Get back to the game of life, because they're not gonna stop. They probably might try to destroy yours, the best way they can. They will come after you with sticks, stones, and arrows, and bows, and everything possible they can come, just because. They didn't like your choice, but they say that every single person on the face of the earth must be given a choice. And you must respect that choice until you make yours. <laughs> until you make yours. Checks and balances. We use we you know thinking about this topic, you know, American they, they, they're very systematic, so everything is systems and and, and the culture is based on that for from my own little experience. Um, so it, in 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 these checks and balances, you have, you know, you have the legislative, you have the the executive, and you have the ju the judiciary. If I'm saying it right. Said, right. The, the judiciary. We could have problems with this judiciary word here tonight. Hopefully, my tongue stays in place. But <laughs> legislative, executive, and the judiciary. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, when we talk about that, it, for me, it speaks about limits, checks, mm -hmm. limits. You have limits to what you can do. Mm -hmm. And then the balance is the even distribution of things, right? And in this case, the power, even distribution of power. But who limits the checks? <laughs> Who limits the checks? Because <clears throat> the people in soccer that are responsible for the checks so that we could create some balance across the board, um, not putting the people in check. Because if they put the people in check, then they will lose the check. So we start this off with, uh, with <laughs> maybe started this off very rough. Um, and then who is, who is responsible uh, for the equal distribution of power and weight within the soccer environment? You know, I was told one time, um, it's not about doing the right thing. It's what the culture expects. You know, you could do the right thing within soccer and, and you go through the, the process of development, the real process, where where it becomes very expensive if you're not in 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 Spain or in England where and even at those levels you know players have to invest in themselves it's not to just a free ride it's not just you get it no you have to earn it and they have enough people who would have qualified themselves enough who would have put in the hours and the years to be equipped to make sure that you are equipped for what you are trying to achieve. So the time and the effort and the energy that must be given to development is a hard task. Uh, but it was it was said to me one time, this is my personal story with, with this, like, you know, it's not about doing all the right things. Yeah, yeah, you're doing, you're trying to do the right things, but it's not about that is what the culture is what the culture expect expect that blew my mind away um because they actually were saying to me uh, be politically correct or play politics I, I wanted to be a politician when i was younger you know for whatever reason i my whole idea about being a politician was you know making sure that your community, making sure that the people are benefiting from the resources. But then somebody had to slap me behind my head and be like, okay, that is, I, I like that. I like, I like you, how you're thinking, but that's not reality. That's not reality, dude. <laughs> because politics is about what is popular, not necessarily what is true. So, when that was said to me, I was like, whoa, our young people are in trouble. 
Because now you have to do things that are popular. Now you have to go with trends that are not necessarily truth. It's not necessarily about the truth. It's not necessarily about uh, the intentionality of moving this individual uh, to a better place. It's about the culture and what the culture expects, uh, which means the culture don't expect a, a, a lot. Because if that is being said to you, and, and and this is this is a this is all in all corners of this of this big thing of this big community of where young people are living. <laughs> the young people are living in this community. This soccer community is where they are housing over four hundred thousand kids. What percentage? <laughs> I believe. You might have a different perspective, but I believe the greater part of the percentage is standing on this, on this, on this truth of it's not what you're supposed to be doing, but what the expectations are. Right. Fair enough. Because that expectation brings brings the brings the check. Yeah. So they're telling me uh, do what is popular, not necessarily what is true. What are, you, what are your thoughts? It's it's fair. I mean, like I said, it's not. I'm not even gonna say it's fair enough. It is the truth. Like I said, we've been in a we've been in the environment long enough. Um, as a I've been in the environment as a player, and as a you know as an aspiring high level coach, it's it's it is that Kyle. It it is that truth because playing in it, it it wasn't like I said. I I realized I got coaching when I was in the later part of, of my career, I learned that that's when I started to get coaching. So throughout then it was fun. It was, like I said, it's tournaments, <clears throat> having fun, enjoying yourself and just playing. There was no real honest truth. There was no somebody saying, Hey, this is the process. This is what you're supposed to do. It was never that way. And like I said, I've been all over this country playing Kyle. I've been all over America playing at the highest level. It was never like that. We've never got the honest truth until you branched off or you got out the country. Or I've heard it from serious coaches like you've been lied to. This this is this is why it took so long for you to get to where you wanted to be. And that's it's sad. Not, it yeah, is that's sad. sad because especially when you, you the player, we'll go deep into it. You know, we got we, we have to leave <laughs> foundation and, and kind of talk about the thing a little bit. Uh it's bad when the individual have this desire to be good. And, I th and that's where I said, a lot of people don't care about their choices. And, I, and as I get older, I'm getting better with it and better understanding, you know, that it don't matter. A person will make their choice. And, and you have to remove yourself away from somebody else's choice. You you get frustrated and you get depressed and you go through hell in life when somebody else's choice is allowed to affect you. And on the other hand, when it don't affect you, then in other people's mind, you don't care. That's why I start off by saying everybody get a choice until you make yours. When you make yours, then you're the worst person on the face of the earth. But they don't understand that their choices also had an effect. Mm -hmm. But then it don't need to have an effect in real life. It don't. That's your choice. You make your choice. I should make my choice. But is what you're talking about is there's, there's no checks and balance. There's no accountability within this mm -hmm. thing. And if and 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 I tell you at the end of the show. We will we will know something. Stay stick around long enough uh, to listen. Please do share. Please let us know that you're here. Share your comments. Participate in in this in this in this in this topic tonight because that might just be your child. You know, we look at something the other day, and you know, watching at a a, a youth game, and. The coach is on his phone while the game is playing. And he's having lunch. 
or snack or something. Snacks. It was snacks. While, while he's coaching. And maybe because the team that he's coaching is, is winning handsomely or doing well, maybe it's his moment to say, oh, well, I don't need to do anything anymore. My team is, my team is that good. Who is checking him? It's a big club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big club. But everybody around seems to be very comfortable with that behavior because they're winning. But these young girls or these young players, these young girls, because we're girls, these young girls will believe that that is the attitude uh, of mm -hmm. the expectation at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And then they will come to me and then they realize that's not the idea. That's not the behavior. Because that has never proven to get nobody to no high level. Now I will have to check them. Mm -hmm. But now they don't know the distribution of power. So some people believe the power is on one side. Because nobody's checking. So now here goes. I'm the bad one. But before we dive deep into it, we'll take a. I'll do. Have a quick interruption to encourage game intelligence through our um, our learning corner, as we as we call it. We'll be right back. <laughs> because of this, and because it's, this player ten is forcing in this direction. We will ask the 11 to be a bit deeper to close this space for the seven so that the three can actually play halfway between the seven and the two like this. So the 11 could always take this, this pass away. Even if they try to play a long ball across there, give the 11 enough time to drop in. Or it gives the four, the five, and uh, to slide over, still keeping the 11 here, in the event of an intercept, now you have all this space. Welcome back to the Coach Kyo Show. Kyo Day here, alongside me, the Greater Wall Ahmed. If you would like to sponsor that segment, if you like the content, if you think it can help, hi Yolanda. Good to see you. Please do share. Yes, if you would like to, um, please contact contact us. Obviously, our info um, is running along the screen constantly um, so that you can help us to continue to bring this content to our young people. We know. We know for sure. A lot of people, a lot of young ones, they're not exposed to the in-depth um, teaching of the game. To truly raise, excuse me, truly raise their game intelligence. And in soccer now, it's about game intelligence. It's about perception to action. It's not about um, solving problems. That's why you have all those days to train. And if you're not training enough, we know the struggle is real. It's perception to action. So you you must have enough intelligence encoded so that you can pretty much work on autonomy so please do if you if you would like to support it um, we are happy we are happy and grateful in advance to have you on board so talking about this checks and balance it, it i wanted to use this analogy because i heard it somewhere and it it, it blew my mind but I, I, I thought about it, and, I was, and I'm thinking, listen, think about the snake outside. And you and I, you and I we had this discussion. Um, it's a powerful thing, and it relates to accountability. It's, it relates to what is your role as a person, and, and how are you willing to check people in spite of what might come back. Um, but that by checking them, 
it allows them to see things from a different perspective and it gives them a better choice. You know, if you are able just to do things and function within your environment with no accountability, checks and balance, then you can become self-consumed with what you're doing and not necessarily elevating yourself sure. because there's no one checking you. Sure. So there's no balance. It's just you and you. And, and I and I use the, the snake outside and, and think about all and I, we in the office and we working all night like we oftentimes do. We're in here. Um, and, and I get a bit tired and I say, you know what? While you keep working, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get some fresh air. And I decide to go outside and, and, and get some fresh air. But while I'm outside, I, I see a snake. It's a big, huge snake. <laughs> and if you know me, I hate snakes. <laughs> I hate snakes. Because snakes represent something that I don't care to be... <laughs> in, in, in close proximity with I don't even like bushes like there's, I just feel like there's a snake in a bush one time I was going through a bush and it's like a track and I step on one side of the, one side of a stick and the <laughs> other side raised up something in my mind said it's a snake Why? I think I was flimstone <laughs> I, 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 I cut you the track. I think I made an extra. I think I made an extra to the side of the track. I was I was out of there. I was out of there. If the if if there's a there's a bush and there's a track that takes me there in ten seconds, I walk in the wrong but I take five minutes. So think about think about that and and me being outside and seeing the snake. I decided, you know what? I need to get out of here because I hate snakes. <laughs> now, on my way coming back in, you are trying to go outside. Now, <laughs> <laughs> do I tell you there's a snake outside or not? And if I don't tell you, if I mind my own business, let's say I mind my own oh, business. Yeah. It's my business. I saw the snake. I don't have to <laughs> tell you nothing. Go out there, let's swallow you. Maybe whatever you have, I will get it. Maybe everything will be left in my name. Maybe <laughs> I got I got less drama to deal with you out of the picture. Like I, all these things I could be thinking, right? I don't have to tell you. <laughs> I should I I should just mind my own business, right? <laughs> but I wouldn't. Because I've encountered so many snakes in life. I wish if people would have said to me, there's a snake outside. Because when you don't know there's a snake outside, you will make a choice to go outside not knowing that you can be bitten. So a lot of times people are upset with you and I. And when we talk about these things and we bring them to forefront, they, they say we don't know what we're talking about. But it exists because we experience it. That's, that's why we said in this show, it's not scripted and it's not, it's an uncommon show because it it comes from our own experiences. People are mad or people are upset, and we we because it come it comes. If you don't know, it comes. It comes. It they talk about it all the time, and they say be careful, and they do all these things. But you have a choice, right? I would have made the choice to say, "Oh, well, there's a snake outside." You might choose to go there and say, "Boy, I'm not scared of, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid <laughs> of snakes." What if you are afraid of snakes? You might not be afraid of snakes, but you didn't, 
You didn't realize that snake was that big? <laughs> but at the end of the day, my choice is to make sure I tell you what you need to hear. Because it's the truth. So now I check you. Now I give you the power to make a choice. Why are you mad with me? Because I tell you there's a snake <laughs> outside. Why are you mad? Why are you upset? Why are you why are you saying, oh, he thinks he knows everything? He thinks he have all the right answers. No, you made a choice to think that I have all the right answers. I am just telling you what I know. Why are you mad? <laughs> why are you upset? Why are you saying all of these things? With all that I'm saying here, you still have a choice. That is why people say things. That's why people tell you things. Because they want to give you a choice. Now you could choose to do what you want. Without you making the choice, why are you bothered? Why are you bothered? We're still going to do what we're going to do. We're still going to be, we're still going to come and, and, and have the Coach Kayo show regardless. Because somebody will want to know there's a snake outside. Because they might not know. And if they don't know, the chances of them being killed or being infected is real. It's true. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I think I think two reasons. Two reasons why I, th I believe people don't want to know. One is the fact that you have the knowledge. You know, if, when people don't understand certain things, and then another person has the knowledge, is it's an envy thing. I believe it's an envy thing. I believe it's it's oh, I didn't know it, so he believes he knows everything. That's one. And like you said, people have choices anyway. Human nature is. I still want to see what's what, what he talking about. Wait, wait, what he really talking about? He, he don't know nothing. Let me go and see. He talk about a big snake. Let me go see that snake. And then, <laughs> and then I get bit. It's and then choice. I talk about if I make it, I'm like, yeah, Kyle, you're right. It's your choice. <laughs> it's right. your choice. It don't make me right. It don't make me wrong. What I'm doing is giving you a choice. People believe that their choices should limit your voice. Sure. What did I say? Everybody says you have a choice until you make yours. The energy is no longer the same. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. I said a couple moons ago that in order to live a, a fulfilled, fulfilled life, you need two things. You need faith and you need to stop taking things personal. It's too hardest thing you will have to do. Is it too hardest? Yeah, the first one is hard. hardest thing you will have to do. The first one is hard. You have to practice every day. You have to hold your head and pull your hair and walk away and 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 just remove yourself from somebody else's choice. Somebody cut in front of you when you're driving. You have a choice in that moment to drive behind them. <laughs> and slam your car into them. <laughs> or you could say, you know what? Maybe somebody's dying and they need to get there quick. Maybe their house is on fire. Maybe the child is under the rest. May you don't know. You don't know. But in that moment, you can make a choice. Or you could take it personally. Who dare you cut in front of me? Like, we... We don't get it right all the time. That's true. But it don't change the fact that people will oftentimes check you. And then you have the choice. Then you will be, all right, how will I distribute this thing? This anger. Will I put it, will I put it there? Or I will or I or or will I start singing a hymn? <laughs> or will I start singing a hymn? That's true. That's true. Or will I, or, or I might just make the decision to say, hey, that man may be in trouble, boy. That woman may be in trouble. Let them go. Let them go ahead of me. Because sometimes they cut in front of you and you're right at the stoplight with them. So they did all of that crazy thing 
and you're right there with them. So this, we're talking about checks and balances. Don't, don't. We, I got, I got a question. Stay with us. Stay with us. I got a question. Go ahead. So question says, when you've been dealt, when you've been dealt with the liars and people have told you lies, how can you trust somebody that tells you something? That's a good question. That's a good question. You will forever be told lies. Truth comes from within. So if you, if you're saying that people have lied to you, maybe you need to look at yourself. Just maybe. Because <laughs> you attract. Regardless if you want to think of yourself highly or whatever, you often attract things based on your behavior or based on what you are dealing with or what you are looking for. So you might be looking for something to feel something and not paying attention to the thing that the person coming with because they're coming with something that you are familiar with. So I oftentimes say, if you want to trust people, it's first have to trust yourself. You trust God first, obviously, but then trust yourself. And what do I mean by trust yourself? That's a good question. What do I mean by trust yourself? Because you want the question that you're asking, you want to come to a place where you can feel comfortable in a space that you dwell. And I'm saying to you, that comes from trusting yourself. And you might ask the question, so what do you mean trusting myself? There's something that called non-negotiables. And all of us, including myself, had to understand what that truly means. Because just like you're saying, how do I trust somebody? Then you have lost trust already. So what makes you think that you should be trusted when you don't have trust. Because if you don't have trust, you can't trust no one. And if you don't trust no one, why should they trust you? <laughs> so now trust, now lack of trust, I've just met lack of trust. Lack of trust and lack of trust don't add up to trust. It add up to mistrust. <laughs> so until... and and. You know, I had to go through all these 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 avenues in life and did some things and said some things and behave some ways. It's not necessarily a representation of who I am, and that's fine. I really don't care because all everything in life is part of a journey until you can put it in perspective. That you can find some healing and some and and some upliftment in your life. That is non-negotiable. That means you have to set some principles and some boundaries that you don't negotiate. And when you do that, then you're living by a certain standard. And if you use the will of the Father and you use his manual, you are able to establish some non-negotiables in your life. And when people cross them, you just go the other way. So instead of you having to trust people, you start trusting what God has given to you. You start trusting your non-negotiable that helps you to raise a standard and live a certain, live by a certain code, as they say, that you're able to easily move away from people who are not quality. So it starts with you. Set some non-negotiable. There's not there's so many people who don't live by who don't live by no principles. You ask them and then they start looking for answers. <laughs> they, they start looking for answers. And when you don't when you don't have those things, when I thought I had them, you start allowing other people's decisions and their choices to affect or influence your behavior. But your non-negotiables will check you 
and it was established on balance mm -hmm. where you could distribute distribute some things across the line that you are able to live by and don't lose yourself because when you lose yourself you have to work your socks off to get back there and i can't tell you enough people will not be around you who you believe would be around you to help you go through that process because once you lose yourself that dopamine that receptor they it already start encoding a certain behavior and if you don't understand then you will see yourself doing things that boy i really don't want to do it but you will do it anyway because you don't understand when you do something it latches itself on and now you've got to work yourself out of it. And if you don't have quality people around you, if you don't have people around you who, don't, who are not quick to look right and look nice and talk about you, then you're probably going to keep going down that road. So I would tell you, get around some quality people who understand how to make the journey back from where you are and what you've done because you have the desire and the potential to be better than you were or what you're doing presently. Get around some people who will understand that and they will support you in becoming what God wants you to become because you still have life. And if you didn't mean nothing to the world, you've been checked out already. So hopefully that answer your question yeah. and, and bring some clarity. That was pretty, that was pretty much the, the second one is like that too, kind of. Because the second one is like with the culture full of people that want to cut other people off. I guess that's what they're trying to put it like, you know, culture in America, everybody's trying to get on top of everybody. When somebody gives you advice or something, it's it seems as if that person doing that intentionally to, to get ahead. So it's kind of like, how can you trust somebody when the culture is like that? This is a, this is, it is a cutthroat culture. And it's, it's not just one place, it's the entire world. Um, if you meet 10 people, they including your family, nine out of that 10 might be might be cut short. That's just that's just facts. Who is family right now? What does that really mean in life? Um, I think it comes down to, like I said, you have to have a an awesome relationship with God. I don't care. I'm I'm not a priest, I'm not a pastor, I am not nothing. I'm absolutely nothing. I know that for sure. I am nothing unless he goes with me. Because I don't know what is coming towards me. I don't know what is coming behind me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I don't even know what is really going on around me. So for me, is it's like you have to have this relationship with this, with this boss who truly understands you and puts you in a position where you can live out your purpose. And at the end of the day, you know, keep <laughs> or keep running to him because there's no one else to run to. You, you don't come across people every day who understand who you are. They only understand what you do. They only understand what they see. They only understand history. Not a much a lot of them don't even care about present. And they don't even care about future. They say, they say 80% don't care. 80%, 80% don't care and 20% glad it was you. Or 20% don't care and 80% glad it happened to you. So what are you talking about? You see, you saw Job, his own wife tell him, go boy, curse God and die. Curse God and die. So again, I, under, I hear what you're saying. But the only way you live a fulfilled life, because one thing I would say, if you, if you don't have trust, that means if you don't trust people, that means you are losing trust also. <laughs> I, I didn't know that before. When you, when you stop trusting people, you start losing trust because you can't be what you're not. You can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, when you lose it, when you don't have it for people, you lose it. Trusting people could be a blessing and a curse. But guess what? You have to trust you. You have to trust what God gave you. You have to trust how God created you. Because at the end of the day, 
it's not about you. It's about what the Father wants to do through you. So if you do the right things, at, the, at some point in time, this man will protect you. This boss up there will have the angels around you. He had the angels around three, the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. He had it around Daniel. He had it. There's so many stories. You guys, you guys, you guys read comic stories. Don't be mad with me because I read the Bible. <laughs> you guys read all kind of. You guys read Harley Quinn. You read comic books. You read and you read. You you read what you want to read. Don't be mad with my choice to read the Bible. I read the Bible because with, with, with all my madness, boy. At the end of the day. When you turn around, is that one thing? That one thing is the only thing that stands. So don't lose, <laughs> don't put trust in, don't lose your trust in people because you're actually losing trust in yourself. Set some non-negotiables, set some boundaries, live by those boundaries, and ask the Father to guide you based on your purpose what boundaries you need to set. And the one thing about boundaries, when you cross them, you know exactly you know exactly where to go back. You know your starting point, so you go right back. And then you could become new. Hopefully, uh, I was able to, to answer that person's question. It's a cutthroat world. <laughs> it's a cutthroat world. Yeah. It don't matter who they are. It don't matter how much they come close. You better have some non-negotiable and believe in people just like God believes in you. And then you will see. You will see reciprocity or you will not. And if they don't, then use your non-negotiable to keep them moving. Move them out of the way. But you know who got checks and balances? Boy, for <laughs> installation. They understand accountability. They understand accountability. This is why they do their work at the highest level because they want to respect those who would have invested in them. Listen to what they had to say. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes, and we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate for all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Coach Guy Show. If you're now joining us, we talking about checks and balances. I'm your host, Coyote McKinnon, alongside me, the great Awal Ahmed. Check out Pro Installation. Like I said, they understand accountability, and that's what we're talking about. Um, but I want to zoom in on something. We got about, about 10 minutes here. Um, you know, we're going to try to stay with these questions. If, if you ask it, we're not going to cut our show to please um, no listening here. We're here to add value. So if you have questions, keep them coming. We will do our best to answer it and, and maybe create uh, this great dialogue so that we can improve each other's life. Uh, so just like the government, oh well, with these three arms, in soccer, there's the same thing. <laughs> Funny, thinking about it, um, they, they have the arm. I put the arm in chronological order for me. When it comes to when it comes to soccer in America, it's parents, organization, then players last, right? So I look at parents as the legislative the legislative arm. They're Congress, boy. They are Congress. <laughs> the organization is the executive arm. They will carry out what the parents want. They carry out what the parents want to the best to make sure the government make sure the thing the check come in, make sure the check stays. And then the, the judiciary, we got it right, right? Yes, the judiciary. <laughs> judiciary. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened when I was coming up. Players, the players, they could only act when these two arms get themselves together. So it's the same way. It's the same, for me, it's the same concept. 
This, no, this is my perspective, right? Uh, yeah. This is the Get Coach Kyle show perspective. And everything that is being said here, we stand behind it, okay? So players really got no power. They really ain't got no power. Because when the two big boys do what they have to do, then it then then they 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 are affected or influenced by the decision of the legislative and the executive arm. Parents, organization could be convenient, could be check. All right, let's see where the players fall in between that. Let's see where the at athletes form. What what they fall in between this this grand scheme of things. It's <laughs> a fact, bro. It's a fact. <laughs> While they need to be, they are checking. They are checking each other. While they should be checking each other to make sure there's a balance, they are going in separate directions. And nothing is bringing it to the place where it actually needs to be. So there's, there's a developmental process. And one should be more club facing or organization facing and one should be player facing there's nothing there for parents facing <laughs> but they're the legislative arm that's true that's true while they need to be checking each other while they need to be checking each other to make sure that the the beneficiary of this is being taken care of because the real power should be rest in the hands of the athletes because they are the ones set to benefit from the truth. Yes. The sad part of the world, and you, you're jumping on this, sir. the sad part is I give you a chronological order of what it looks like within the soccer community. But the reality is there's no chronological order. The parents are all three arms. <laughs> They're all three arms. <laughs> I, the kids will have nothing. The, the players are nowhere to be found. So who checking who? Because the organization can't govern itself correctly by not going with whatever the expectations are from the parents. The organization only power is to control the behavior of the coaches within there to make sure that the checks, not check in, the checks, the, the checks, the thing that the thing that look like this, and you get signed and everything. That's the only thing they're there for. They they that's the only power they have to check the coaches to make sure the check come in. They can't check the parents. They cannot. Because once you check the parents, the check will stop coming. They will go down the road somewhere else where they're not going to be checked. And if they get checked over there, that check will stop coming too. So they, they are all three arms. There's no other arm. There's no other arm. They, they, they make up the thing. They decide the thing. And then they make laws around, the, but I don't know what they do. They just, they are all three arms. They, they do what they want. Because nobody could check them. Nobody could check the parents. It's offensive. Because once again, are we talking about customer service? Or 
Are we talking about development process? How, where do we where do we put it um, to make sure that they understand it should be checked? Because at, at where it stands now, like I said, you you can't do it the right way. You can't because the culture have its own expectations. So you have to be politically correct. So nobody wants to know there's a snake outside. <laughs> That's not <what> fair. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Nobody wants That's, to know there's a snake outside. That's exactly what I put while, while you was talking. I said, I said, Kyle, but nobody wants to know that though. <laughs> nobody wants to know there's a snake. I like, everything you're saying, yeah, it makes sense. It's the truth, Kyle. But nobody wants to know that. Everybody has their standards. Like you telling me the truth is like, yeah, I know it, but Eh, whenever if that comes, it comes. Eh, whatever. If it comes, it comes. But I, the I major wanna... part of it is right. The government set up that way because they wanted order. It's dangerous to give one man power. Yeah. If you're not God, powers make you believe you could be like God. You understand? When you give people power and you don't check them, let them understand. That, there's, that need, there needs to be a balance here. You don't get to just do what you want and say what you want and behave how you want because you believe the power rests solely with you. Because you can decide if your child plays or not. <laughs> if your child stays or not. So you don't want checks and balances. And when there's no checks and balance, what it creates? It creates a dysfunctional government. Yeah, no order. So now it creates dysfunction in families. Kids are not talking to their parents like they should. They're secretive. They won't tell you anything anywhere. They won't tell you everything anywhere. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> but they're not willing to tell you anything. One parent said that, boy, one thing I don't want is my child to hate being around me or can't wait to move away from me. Mm -hmm. I wonder if some like parents and, and guardians and people in charge know that they, they have them exist. <laughs> they have them exist. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones... Uh, so I want to commit suicide. Those are the ones that want to take their own lives because they, they're in such a dysfunctional or in such a dysfunctional environment. This thing runs deep. Yeah. It don't just stop with family. It goes to club because these same kids are going into the clubs and they're socializing with other kids. And people who are like each other, like each other yeah. think about that you don't like to be checked so you line up yourself with some parents who don't like to be checked and they, that means their kids don't like to be checked and everybody don't like to be checked and now there's this dysfunction it does not leave a club it goes into the community and you know the community will determine uh the committee come the committees come together and we, we have this country. And not just this country, but it's all over the world because people listening to us from all over the world. It's this dysfunction. I have a story though. One parent taught, you know, one parent taught at one time he he can be all three of those arms. Because he was allowed to do it at other clubs. Okay. Because I normally vet parents and I I want to know. What made you leave over there? What you been doing over there? They oftentimes try and vet them, just like how they try to vet you and I. They try to go do their research. I do the same. If you didn't know, now you know. I do the same. Because you're not just you're not just you're not just taking the child, you're taking the family. Mm -hmm. And what they stand for and what they represent. So you gotta be on your, your game. You have to know what come in. And you have to know if you want that there, if you want that here. So I, you know, he'd done it before and, he, you know, he'd do what he wants and say what he wants. 
<laughs> Remember, he, all, he feel he's all three arms. So he, he just, I could do what I want and I could go where I want. He crossed the line and I checked him. I checked him. And I checked him in a way, just like how you see news on TV. How everybody get it. It's wide open right there. Everybody could see. And I checked him. Because what he did was disrespectful to other players, he, to other parents. And, and he did it in the open, so he needed to be checked in the open. In the end, the result, he got removed because people knew of his behavior before. And nobody would check him. You got to create checks and balances. You, got, you, you just can't feel that because you are, you have power. Like I said, I give you the chronological order. There is power there. But there must be, there must be distribution of that power. Because somebody is still helping your child to be what they're supposed to be. And, and that is your hope, that the child become what you would love for them to become. So you, there need to be some balance. And the organization, they can't create no balance. Because, like I said, once they start checking... The check start going away. <laughs> so what we have is what we have is lack of uh, accountability, which creates dysfunction. Your thoughts? No, I, I'm I'm going to give you a question. I just saw it come up. Sorry, hold on. Good. Okay. So they talked about their their academy. So they said within our academy, we believe we don't have the right coaching. They're going into details. We believe we don't have the right coaching. Um, I wanted to have a conversation with the coach, but I felt that would have been disrespectful because I didn't send an email. So would this be would this be in the same order in terms of having a conversation with the organization or better to have the conversation first with the coach? This, and that is such a good question because people, like I said, there's no checks and balances here. So there's no... There's no protocol in people's behavior. The organization don't coach the player. The coach does. Okay. So the first person you should be having a conversation with is the coach. One person said, in, in all honesty, and, and I believe what they said, and they, they checked me on it. They said, people are not realistic when it comes to to their kids. They don't believe that their child can lie. They don't believe that. I sit right here and know that kids went home and tell a bold face lie because it, it they believe it would secure them. Damn, okay. They, it, they know that their parents will come and stand behind them. Yeah, true. And that is what happens when, and I see the dysfunction that creates now, because you have to know that a child would not interpret something the same way. Not necessarily a child might, some kids will go lie plain, plainly. They will just go lie. But some kids will interpret something in the wrong way. And they might go home. Like if I tell you something, you go tell somebody else. You're not going to tell it the same way I told you. Because yeah. you can't remember it word for word. Yeah. You will put in something else. Or you will take out something. So it's very important when situations happen is to have the respect to say, coach, let us sit down and have a, a conversation about what I received to better understand how it was said, what was the intentions behind it, or what was the intentions behind the decision before you go and create a situation on something that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. Case in point, I like to talk about my story because that's what matters. I, I record everything. And I started doing it because I've seen players go and totally lie on coaches. So I always recorded 
I always have a video of me at every practice. So I was at a certain club. Player want to be what player want to be. You know, they ain't got no checks and balance. So they, they think they could do what they want and say what they want and behave how they want. So he got checked. Player got checked. Went home and said everything that not supposed to be said. Right? Big bravados now. They want to come and check coach guy. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> So let's look at the evidence. Let's listen to the evidence. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Your child is an angel, right? Your child is, oh, your child don't, huh? Your child have never. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Because I like, you know, organization like to put, oh, well, I can't believe your story. And then they put you in this whole middle of mm -hmm. who is right and who is wrong because they really don't want to check. That. <laughs> they don't really want to check the person who out of place because they will lose that check. So now you have this. I was like, bye bye. This is not the organization I want to be a part of. Because these things get people in trouble. Mm -hmm. What if I didn't have a record on me or a video on me? Imagine. I know who I am. I know what I look like. So I don't play with it. Because people could say anything. And the level... Vecnocentrism in this place, and it relates to you and I. You always got to be careful. Yeah. So always go to the coach first. Whatever you hear or whatever you see, whatever you don't truly understand, be an adult. Or if the coach don't want to speak to you because he don't think he should speak to you, which he should. Unless you cross the line and you think you could just disrespect someone mm -hmm. and then want them to give you an ear because you don't think nobody should check you, then it's a different story. But if you're an individual or you're an adult that understand that you have a child and, and kids don't always understand things, it's, it's very important for you to have that open discussion and 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 be respectful to to truly to truly and genuinely want to understand what you're seeing or what you're hearing so that both of you can hold each other accountable never go to no organization first the organization will tell you exactly what you need to hear and to they will go down there and they will try to bully the coach because the check. So now, now nothing, nothing good came out of that situation because they will not check you because they need the check. They will go check the coach, but the coach don't feel like he did nothing wrong. So now the coach, <laughs> we think the coach got to do. You're, you really know. Well, you really think the, the coach really, you really want to deal with you. The coach wishing all kind of thing happen so that you don't have to be there. You, not everybody got God in them. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody got God in them. So, tell I, don't, I don't understand because there's no check and these organizations will allow parents to just jump all the steps to come straight to them because it's their friends. It's their friend, yeah. Hmm? It's their friends and, and, and I know him, we went to school and yeah, I'm going to check a wall because boy, you know, he can't talk like that and do, 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 do. But you don't man. know that your child don't have no manners, don't have mm -hmm. no respect, don't know how to conduct themselves when they come out to your house. But you okay with that because you don't have nobody checking you. No balance. Oh. So I would encourage the question, the person that asks the question, you always go to the person who deals with your child directly. Mm. 
Don't use your friend. Use some protocol. Use some respect. And if you don't get what you want, then it's now good to go to the technical director. Let the technical director and the coach sit down and have that conversation with you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get what you want at that level, then maybe you need to leave. You, you don't... You don't need to be going high up. Yeah. <laughs> ten, ten is yeah you, you, you don't you don't need to be going through all of that. You just time to go. Time to go. So you any more questions? We're wrapping it up. It's 9 15 already. No, that's it, Kyle. So I can't leave you without saying how you can can enhance. Because we need checks and balances within our within our youth environment. It's not just for soccer. But it's for accountability. Young people in this time and in this generation have no accountability. <laughs> they have no respect. They don't have no, they have no common sense. It's a reality. Like I said, there's a snake outside. <laughs> there's a snake outside. They don't have that. They don't even understand who they are. So when things get tough, when things get rough, they go to a safe place. And that safe place is lack of accountability, lack of mental strength. And it's more sad when you see it in young boys and, and young men. It's more sad. It's crazy. Because the moment it gets tough, the moment it gets hard, in moments when you become uncomfortable, that is your moment to quit. You never quit when you're uncomfortable. It's like leaving something worse than when you came in. That's a sign of weakness. It's a sign that you don't like to be checked. Mm -hmm. You don't like to be vulnerable. You don't like people to call you out. And then you run and you go home and they say, okay, you know, if that's what you want to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. Not holding you accountable, not truly understanding your why. No, you, you, you allow it to happen because it wasn't comfortable for you. Or now it's convenient for the people around you. So they accept it. No checks and balances. Don't worry, you'll get to 30. You'll get to 35. You'll get to 40. You might just make 45. Life will check you. Of course. I hope you got some balance. <laughs> I hope you got some balance. Because people in their 40s still struggling with balance. And they feel like life don't make no sense. Thanks. But I will share some things before we go. And I think one of the things you need to do is be honest. Honesty within with the circle. We need honesty within circle. Um, I can tell you the snake outside. But it's still your choice. Don't demonize us for telling you there's a snake outside just because you don't believe there's a snake outside. I was outside. I saw the snake. Not because you didn't see the snake. You want to <laughs> you want to crucify me? Yeah. I saw the snake. Now you make your choice and leave me alone. What about that? You make your choice. But don't try to tell me I can't say there's a snake outside. I have to tell you there's a snake outside. If there's anything that is good in me or anything left good in me, there's a dangerous snake outside. I have to tell you there's a snake outside. If there's any good in me, if, if there's a little bit of drop, a little drop, even a pinch of drop, a pinch, a little pinch of good, I have to tell you there's a snake outside. You should. It's your choice. It's your choice. Don't try to, to stifle someone's voice because it's not your truth. Because you didn't see the snake outside. I saw the snake outside. 
It's a simple thing. That simple thing. There needs to be honesty within the environment. There's such a, there's such a lack of honesty. And you meet the players and you know this has been in, embedded in them. They don't know to be honest. <laughs> They feel like honest is a dangerous, being honest is a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. If you can't be honest around people, just leave them, let they go. Let them go their way. If you don't want to be honest, if you know you can't be or you don't want to be, you choose not to be, just don't have them around you. Just go your separate, just go your way. Just be on your way. Be on your way. It's a very simple thing, but the very thing creates consistency. It helps to build authentic people. You're not going to find it, I'm telling you. You're not going to find it around the closest people to you at all. You're not. You're not going to find it around the closest people to you. But Marley said, you know, your best friend could be your worst enemy. He knew something. He knew the snake outside. He knew the snake outside. There's no way he there's no way he writing that that lyric unless he know, he unless he encounter he the snake it. outside. He felt it. <laughs> he he felt, felt it. it. <laughs> Where you looking for it? It's not it's not necessarily there. Family, friends, brother, sister, auntie, uncle. You you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? When it comes down to it, do they know who you are or do they know what you've done? Or they know what they see or what they heard? Do they really know who you are? Who really knows who you are? Who really knows? You give so much stock to people. You give so much stock in to, to whatever. At the end of the day, you must know who you are. And if you establish some checks, <laughs> some balances in your life, and you let God check you, <laughs> and you start creating the balance, you can be just fine. You will be just fine. You're here for one purpose and you're here for one person. So when everybody else feel like they have a major role to play, the only role they have to play is what God wants them to play. Exactly. And if they don't want to play that role, you're still okay. You're still okay. We need honesty within the sport. We need honesty within youth development. We need honesty. We need we need the consistency. And we need to make sure that these arms are, are figured out so that they work and they, they become functional. Right now it's dysfunctional. Amazon said, don't follow no path. He said, leave a trail. We are telling you there's a snake outside. Your choice. Your choice. Closing words. Let's let's go. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's it's a tough in this in this environment for sure, Kyle. Like I said, mm -hmm. growing up in this environment, it's not easy. And one thing I'm gonna take away big from this um, for the youth, like you said, be around quality people, ones that would tell you the truth ones that would be honest with you because that's a big thing that we are missing today and i believe being around and that quality person might just be one person and not a group like you said it's not a group of people it might just be one person and like i said that one person might not be from your family so be around quality people that are honest with you because we see it every day people don't want honesty kyle nobody wants to know this thing is outside they don't care you might tell me a thousand times i like yeah whatever <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't want that. So be around people that will tell you the truth and not just tell you to show you. Be around and show you and we'll go to bat for you 
when things are tough because when things are tough, you quickly see who who is in your corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't say better words. Um, God bless you guys. Um, there's a snake in the yard. I'll I'll say it now and I'll say it forever. There's a snake in the yard. Your choice. We bless you. We we wish that you have a, a fruitful week. Uh, we'll be back here. Thanks. Before I go, thanks for the questions. Um, hope you were able to answer it with, and, and bring some clarity. Mm -hmm. And if we help one, if we're able to inspire one, that help. You can't help anyone. If we're able to inspire, impact, and, and bring about transformation in one, and then we know who's pleased with us. Mm -hmm. So we are we are happy to do this every Monday at eight. Uh, continue to support the channel. Continue to support our movement to impact and inspire our young people to live out their purpose. Uh, we're not going to stop because the snake outside. Yeah, That yeah. snake outside. We're not stopping. So hope to see you here again next Monday on the Coach Kaya Show. Stay blessed and have a prosperous week. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rex? A elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.